One day later, President Trump is home from Helsinki, and he is backtracking. He returned overnight to face blistering critiques from both parties of his summit with Russia's President Putin. I have to say, I came back and I said, what is going on? What's the big deal? The president was in damage control mode this afternoon after the storm over his statements in Helsinki. Yesterday, he appeared to take Vladimir Putin's word for it that Moscow did not interfere in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. He just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. Today, reading from a prepared statement, he said the opposite. It should have been obvious. I thought it would be obvious, but I would like to clarify just in case it wasn't. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. In Helsinki, Mr. Trump had also dismissed U.S. intelligence findings of Russian involvement in the election. Today, he insisted he has great confidence in the intelligence community. Let me be totally clear in saying that, and I've said this many times, I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. Could be other people also. Earlier in tweets, Mr. Trump blamed the news media for the bipartisan shellacking he's taken. He also blamed special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation for hurting U.S.-Russian relations. Before leaving Helsinki, he returned to the theme. They drove a phony wedge, just a phony witch hunt rigged deal. Just last Friday, Mueller indicted 12 Russian officials for election cyber attacks. Putin, in his own interview, declined to accept a copy of the indictments, and he appeared to defend the hacking of Democratic Party emails. So are you saying it's okay because it was their real emails, so it's okay to hack and per spread this information out and interfere with the election? Uh, well, listen to me, please. The information that I am aware of, there's nothing false about it. Every single grain of it is true, and the Democratic leadership admitted it. Today, Moscow announced it's ready to implement new agreements on boosting collaboration with the U.S. military in Syria and on extending a nuclear arms pact. And Russian reports voice sympathy for Mr. Trump. But in the hours before the president spoke today, the criticism continued from the likes of House Speaker Paul Ryan. Vladimir Putin does not share our interests. Vladimir Putin does not share our values. We just conducted a year-long investigation into Russia's interference in our elections. They did interfere in our elections. It's really clear. There should be no doubt about that. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell declined to directly criticize the president. Instead, he tried to reassure Europe. We believe the European Union uh, countries are our friends, and uh, the Russians are not. We understand the Russian threat, and I think that is the widespread view here in the United States Senate among members of both parties. Fellow Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine did take on Mr. Trump over his initial dismissal of U.S. intelligence findings. I remain astonished that the president would choose to believe the assertions by President Putin over the unanimous conclusions of his own U.S. intelligence leaders. Some Republicans came to the president's defense, at least partially. Texas Senator John Cornyn said he understands how the special counsel's investigation of the Trump campaign's contacts with Russians has affected the president. That's what I think has got the president so spun up, is because he feels like this is an attack on him personally. And I wish we could separate those two. Democrats sounded a darker note. Senate Minority Otherwise, Leader Chuck Schumer. So many Americans are going to continue to wonder, does President Putin have something over President Trump that makes the president behave in such a way that hurts our country so? 
hope other no democrats demanded that more republicans forward. speak out more forcefully so then why do so many of my republican colleagues remain silent in light of president trump's open denial of the reality of the russian involvement in our election House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi warned of Russian interference in this year's midterm elections. The president gave a green light to continue to attack our democracy to the Russians. Mr. Trump today promised all-out efforts to prevent future Russian meddling. But Republican Senator Bob Corker, who chairs the Foreign Relations Committee, suggested Congress may need to take some new action that could take the form of additional sanctions on the Russians. As for reaction in Europe, the office of British Prime Minister Theresa May said today she does not think the Trump-Putin summit undermined the transatlantic alliance. But a German member of the European Parliament had a doleful assessment. He said, we Europeans must take our fate in our own hands. For more on the fallout from President Trump's meeting with Vladimir Putin, I'm joined by Washington Post reporter Carol Lenig. Carol, welcome back to the News Hour. What sort of reaction is, has the White House been seeing and hearing, especially from Republicans? What's coming through to them? Well, I think Susan Collins actually captured the word best, sort of astonishment, quiet astonishment, uh, red-faced astonishment, and in the case of Mitch McConnell, sort of um, swallowing your tongue astonishment, where people are not coming out and complaining directly about the president, but some are very concerned about what has transpired here, because the golden standard for U.S. foreign policy has always been that we would keep our partisan differences, we would keep our concerns about our internal political affairs uh, on these shores. We would not attack one another on foreign soil. And here the president has done just that with a longtime foreign adversary at his side, who he sided with. Um, but I would add also, Judy, that it's not just Republicans who are being asked for their opinion or um, openly questioning, as Paul Ryan did, the president's handling of this matter. Inside the White House, there is great consternation about it. We have been hearing about it for the last 24 hours because this didn't go exactly according to the staff's hopes and wishes. In fact, you and your colleagues wrote in the, in the Post today that they had prepared uh, a lot of briefing material for the president, but uh, what you wrote was he ignored most of it. Yes, this was supposed to be short and, uh, not sweet, but short and tough. A quick meeting, a quick news conference, the briefing materials, which numbered up to 100 pages and possibly more, outlined all of the ways uh, to the president that Russia has acted against U.S. interests, uh, its damaging role in Syria, its uh, historic efforts against U.S. interests, and yet the president wasn't able to mention any of those things. He was mostly able to focus on his long-stated and publicly stated desire to be friends with Vladimir Putin. So do they believe with today's, what, what the president called clarification, that this is going to settle down? I think there are a lot of um, fingers crossed behind backs, yes. However, uh, in a way, the, the damage has been done. European allies are likely not really believing that the president twice mistakenly said he, he couldn't imagine that the Russians would interfere in our election. Uh, a remarkable 48 hours uh, taking yesterday and today together, and in fact, more than that, going back over the entire trip. Carol Lenig of The Washington Post, thank you. Thank you. We will hear more from uh, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright after the news summary.